Good morning, Tommy. How you doing? Good morning, my friend. Also the host of Tommy Wilcox Outdoors, which I might say, shameless plug, but it's true. One of the longest running outdoor shows in the country. What is, I think this is your 16th season, 15th year, Tommy. I, I think I'm correct on that. I think it all yeah. started in 2003. I know, man. It, it has flown by, man. It has, and he's still cranking out great outdoors television uh, for folks around the state of Alabama. But let's start with football. There's so many things I want to cover with you. Uh, first, just your your feelings on this rivalry, having grown up in New Orleans, um, even though you came from a Tulane family, still the, the R of LSU dominates that state. We'll get into what it was like when you went back to Baton Rouge in 1979 to play. But just uh, this this is one of the great rivalries in college football. And for Alabama, you played here. Uh, it's a little different because I think Alabama is the team in the SEC and everybody gets up for Alabama. But LSU, I think for them, not having another major rival in that state, um, you know, Alabama's got Auburn, Alabama's got Tennessee. But LSU's got Alabama. Uh, this is this is the game for them, and uh, it makes it a rival. It makes it a special rivalry, particularly when it's played at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. It is, man, and it goes back oh years and years and years, and back to Charlie Pell when he was at LSU, and what a great coach he was. But he'd win nine games a year, but he couldn't beat Alabama, so they finally wound up getting rid of him, you know, and. Uh, if you're going to coach at LSU, you got to be able to beat Alabama. So, Ed Ogeron, is, he's going to get a shot at us. But uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll be up for the challenge. Yeah, Charlie uh, McClendon, who you referenced, if he, he, he said it best. He said, you know, they're going to fire us for losing to uh, Coach Bryant, then we'll all get fired because <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody could beat him. Listen, a little background. Uh, you were recruited by schools all over the country, uh, Alabama, Notre Dame, the list goes on and on. And and we'll get to the pushback that you got from LSU. But coming from a Tulane family, um, you know, you never really were an LSU fan. And quite honestly, I know they got all ruffled up about it, but you never really seriously considered LSU, did you, Tommy? No. we. Uh, my dad played at Tulane and as you mentioned earlier, Tulane, uh, you know, they could never beat LSU. I mean, and it was, uh, they used to play every year and it would be a rivalry. Sort of like Alabama, LSU, except there was never any expectations of Tulane winning. <laughs> because uh, I think they might have won one time that I can remember, and it was back when they uh, went to the Liberty Bowl game. Uh, but, uh, we were, well, my dad, when he was at Tulane, they never did beat LSU. And so we were always brought up to not like LSU and to be Tulane fans. So I never, ever really considered going to LSU. Uh, Alabama always was the team. Of course, we ran the wishbone and all in high school, so. You know, I always liked Alabama. And uh, so that was always my first choice if I got the opportunity. Well, you did. And you uh, you came out of Harahan. You signed with Alabama uh, in 1978 as a quarterback. And, of course, we know Coach Brown would sign about 15 quarterbacks, figuring, the heck, if yeah. they can't play quarterback, we move them somewhere else. And you had a choice to make. You could have stayed at quarterback. I, I want you to tell this story because a lot of people – think of you as a strong safety, but they don't know. You uh, You ran the scout team uh, qu- as a quarterback in 1978. You had the opportunity to stay there, but Coach Bryant called you in and said, you know, I'll let you play quarterback, but you can probably get on the field right away as a redshirt freshman at strong safety, and you wanted to play. You made the move, and, and you really never looked back. You were the SEC Freshman of the Year, two-time All-American. So I know probably there's still a part of you that says, man, I think I could have handled that wishbone, but uh, it worked out pretty well for you. It did, and – uh you know, back then, uh, we had, uh, you know, Stead and Shelley, Alan Gray, uh, Don Jacobs. They was, you know, all good quarterbacks. And at that time, uh, you know, Coach Bryant had, had made that decision. He says, look, you know, he says, because uh, I kind of played both ways in high school. I played strong safety in high school, too. So, uh 
you said that if I wanted to, because, you know, I sat out that whole year, was on the scout team in 78, and, you know, that defense was so good uh, in 78, and I took a beating <laughs> by Barry Krause and Wingo and Marty Lyons and Murray Lake and uh, Curtis McGriff and Wayne Hamilton. So, you know, when it comes time, uh, Coach Bryant said, you know, you you know, you can start on defense. I said, man, I want to play. I sat out all last year just getting beat up, and I wanted to have the opportunity to, to try to beat up on somebody else. And uh, so he gave me a shot at strong safety, and then, uh, like I said, I never looked back. I've always uh, – he did come back to me uh, – after my freshman year and say, you know, look, I had, uh, you know, promised your daddy that, that, uh, I'd give you a shot at quarterback. Do you want to, you know, go back and play quarterback? And I, I told him at that time, no, I said, I, I was happy on defense. And if, if he thought I, I could help him best on defense, that's kind of where I wanted to stay. And, and, uh, so uh, he thought that's where I would be best at. So that's where I stayed and, uh, you know, enjoyed starting for four years and and uh, having, having a lot of fun, man, on defense. Yeah, you certainly did. Uh, all right, let's get to 1979. That uh, was a national championship season, a 12-0 season, and I think a lot of people remember uh, barely got out of Baton Rouge alive, uh, literally and figuratively for you. It was three right. nothing game in a pouring rainstorm. <laughs> and even though you really hadn't considered LSU, those LSU people didn't care. All they knew is you were from New Orleans. You were a high school All American. Uh, you had gone to hated Alabama, and they didn't appreciate it. And uh, they greeted you rather rudely <laughs> uh, that night in that Saturday night in Baton Rouge in 1979. There were signs, disparaging signs. There's even urban legend that they burned a a, a number 15 uh, scarecrow in effigy. Uh, I'm not sure that's true, but there were <laughs> some nasty signs, and and they they let you know about it, didn't they, Tommy? They did, man. They uh, and I tell you, I. I grew up, my family was all tough people, and my high school coaches were all tough, tough people too, man. And and uh, there's no telling how many signs they tore up that night <laughs> and all kind of stuff. I know even after the game, uh, we got to come out and, you know, visit with my parents and friends and all that kind of stuff. I had a high school coach that actually climbed the chain link fence to get up to a banner that they had uh, on one of the crosswalks, and he ripped it down, and that was after the game. So, uh, yeah, you know, the Louisiana people are some of the best people in the world, and and they love their football like Alabama does. And uh, But if you ever cross them, they can kind of get mean. And, and <laughs> really, I just – did what I thought was best for me and my family. And, uh, you know, and it worked out good. I got to be on two national championship teams. That's, you know, two things that I'd have never got done had I went to LSU. Uh, so I think I made the right choice. It's just uh, they're real competitive. And uh, if, if they feel like you're dishing them anyway, they, they get mad about it, and they let you know. But uh, that's all part of the game, man. Yeah, one interesting story on that, that night in 79. Of course, you beat them in 80, you beat them 81, and, and then they snapped an 11-game losing streak against Alabama your senior year at Legion Field in Birmingham in 82. But that night in particular, um, you had the best football team in the country, but it was a miserable night. And you, along with Major and a few others, uh, you know, handled the punt catching duties that year. Oh. Nobody wanted to catch punts in that rain. Major was hurt. Coach Goose Tree and Coach Bryant, tell that story real quick uh, about how the, 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 you know, Coach Bryant didn't call it punt return. He called it punt catching, I guess, because he wanted to stretch the all to catch the ball. But talk, right. tell, tell that story real quick with Coach Goose Tree and Coach Bryant about the before the game in regards to who was going to catch punts. Because it was a miserable yeah. night. Miserable, miserable night. And when I say big raindrops, I mean half-dollar raindrops coming down and when we went out for uh 
pregame, I mean, it had been raining all day, and it was still raining at pregame. And, I mean, we were catching punch at, in, during pregame, and, the, and those big old water drops would come down and hit you in the eye and sting, man. And I kept saying to myself, oh, Lord, man, please don't. Don't let him pick me to return punch tonight. Let Major or somebody else because here I am back in Louisiana. It is pouring down rain, and you know how hard it is to catch punch in the first place. And uh, I said, man, I don't want to be the one that either gets us, you know, to fumble something and get us in bad field position or whatever. And, uh, of course, I was a freshman, and I was thinking, my ah, goodness. So, anyway, we go in after pregame, and Coach Bryant, as always, would read off who started on offense, who started on defense, and then he got to kick return. And when he got to punt return, he said, return and punch tonight is Wilcox. And I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, I uh, had to go out there. He wanted us catching it. You know, he didn't want it. He didn't want it hitting the ground and slipping and sliding and all that kind of stuff. He wanted me to get underneath it and try to catch every one of them. And, and even the punters, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't, wasn't able to kick good spirals. It was like end over ends and, you know, half spirals and stuff. And man, thankfully, all night long, I was able to get underneath them and catch every one of them without dropping any. But man, it was uh, it was a night I never wanted to do again. You know, <laughs> I don't mind catching punts, but when it's raining like it was raining, oh man, I just put extra pressure on you. Yeah, but never... Gary, on that particular game, uh, you know, we played on like a quarter of the field the whole night because they defensively they shifted their whole defense to the wide side of the field. So we offensively, we had to run the ball into the short side of the field all night, uh, and it was just a war, man. It was it was just you know, go back and look at the film. We were lucky to get out of there with a win, but I, they never did anything offensively. And matter of fact, I don't know if they crossed the second half. I mean, the, the fifty yard line into the second half at some point, but uh, it was one of them good old. Southern, you know, three rushes instead of a cloud of dust. It was, you know, a bucket <laughs> of puddle. rain. Yeah. But, uh, but man, it was, it was a good one, and we were lucky to get out of there with a win. Visiting with Tommy Wilcox, former two-time uh, first-team All-American, University of Alabama, SEC Freshman of the Year, national champion, uh, defensive rookie of the year in the USFL with the Arizona Wranglers, talking Bama LSU. I want to get into your relationship with Ed Orgeron. Because it goes way back, and you had him on your 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 outdoor show when he was the head coach at Ole Miss. You know him well, and you played against him in a classic game in high school. Uh, Bobby A. Bear was the uh, was the quarterback, and and uh, Orgeron was a lineman. I, I, is it South Lafouche? Is that how you say it, Tommy? That's it. That's it. South Lafouche. And you're at Harahan. Tell tell that story. Uh, what, they, uh, what a game! South Lafouche is uh, on the bayou. Uh, there's a bayou that runs uh, from Thibodeau all the way down towards Grand Isle and out to the Gulf of Mexico. You know, and a lot of those guys are shrimpers, cramp, uh, crabbers, and, you know, they use their boats more than they use their cars. And there was one way in. You had a road along uh, the, the stretch of highway. Uh, it's uh, called Highway 1. You go all the way down. You go through Homer and then Kibido and and then uh, Golden Meadow, and then you get on down there to South Lafouche. And, uh, all tough kids, you know. They grew up working with their hands and all that stuff. And we played them for the state championship, and we played them at their home field. And it was. Uh, I mean, when you say standing room only, it was standing. It was over 30,000 people, and uh, it was one heck of a night. And uh, we played them hard. I mean, we had friends with them. I mean, we fished it all together. We've done a bunch of stuff together and all. But uh, and, and all year long, we said, man, it'd be pretty cool if we 
played against y'all. You know, we had guys on the team that would go down there on weekends and stuff after our games and stuff. So we knew them pretty well, and uh, and we knew it was going to be a tough game, and it was. And we kind of led the game the entire way, and then right there towards the end, uh, Bobby A. Bear on fourth down and twenty five. Uh, last play of the game for them kind of threw it up and we tipped it and then they tipped it and then that another guy caught it. Unbelievable. 21 20. But tell you, it, it was a, it was like it wasn't meant to be because they threw bottles at our <laughs> buses leave and they were trying to dump our buses over. They were throwing and we had won the game. I mean, they had won the game. They won the game, and they were throwing stuff at us, breaking windows, <laughs> you know, trying to tip the buses over. Our high school coaches were yelling and screaming at them, and, and, uh, but we, we finally got out of there. Can you imagine if they'd have lost the game? You oh, wouldn't well, have gotten that's out. That's what I'm saying. Had we have won the football game, we might never have gotten out of there. It might, you, we might have had to fight our way out all up Highway One. <laughs> well, I've read about that game, folks. If you if you haven't, uh, you know, just Google uh, Harahan versus uh, uh, Bonneville High Bonneville School. Yeah, Bonneville High School uh, versus Bird South Lafouche and, and uh, state championship and read about it. Uh, and Ed, Ed was on that team and he played defensive tackle. Yeah. So he was a. Uh, uh, very good, high strung, tough defensive tackle, and uh, everybody called him Babe back then. Uh, you know, so that that's where we met, and uh, and then he went on to Northwestern Louisiana, and I went on to Alabama. Awesome, man. Just awesome story. And then years later, uh, you're doing a hunting and fishing show, and he's the head coach at Ole Miss, and and you have him uh, – I think he was the head coach at Ole Miss when you had him on, wasn't yeah, he, Tommy? Yeah, he was. Yeah, and y'all went, y'all went uh, yeah. fishing down in Louisiana, and and uh, I know you have uh, – you know, you're friends with him, and, uh, you know, give him credit. I mean, that, that deal at Ole Miss, you know, it didn't end well for him. Uh, nothing else about it – you can say about Ed O'Rourke, he's a tough guy. He, 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 he's a, he's a, he's a you know, determined guy, and – to to have a bad tenure like he had at Ole Miss to bounce back from that and now have the head job at LSU, I think that says a lot about the guy, don't you? Man, it, it does, and he's been very good everywhere. When he was at Miami, he had a he coached a lot of All American. Uh, you know, Warren Sapp was one of them that he had. Uh, he went on out to Southern Cal. You know, coached a lot of great players out there, and. Uh, he, he's he's put in his dues, you know, then got the head coach at Old Best, and then I think he went back out to Southern Cal, and then he's kind of moved around a few times and then got back at LSU. And, and uh, you know, he said his, his, it was his dream job, you know, growing up on the bayou in Louisiana all your life. You, you know, you're a big Tiger fan, and you will, you know, if you get into coaching, you know, he said that his ultimate job would have been to be the head coach at LSU. And uh, when they offered that to him, uh, he said it was like a dream come true. He worked extremely hard for it. And, uh, but he was able to obtain one of his major goals in life. And I'm proud of him. And I know he's going to have his players ready to play. And, and it's going to be a battle. But uh, I think one thing we got, that's good going into tonight is we've got we've got a quarterback that's pretty doggone good and uh I think that's going to really be the difference in t- in uh Saturday's game. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what I want to get to as we get ready to wrap it up. Uh your thoughts on because you you did play down there in very similar circumstances. You went down there in 1979 and in 1981 knowing you had a better team, particularly 79 because of the conditions and I think 81 was a day game down there but uh, um you know what it's going to be like and you know they're good but but this alabama team let's be honest just like that team in 79 that you had this alabama team's better than lsu doesn't mean lsu can't win so i guess from a a pretty much i'm I'm sure the way coach bryant prepared you guys coach saban will be similar 
and, and just saying, hey, you know, just focus on the football field. Just focus on playing the game. Block out all the, the external factors and the, and the noise and just focus on doing your job because if you do that, you're going to win the football game. Am I, am I correct there? Uh, you are, Gary. The, the atmosphere is, is going to be there, and it's there for every game at LSU, and especially a night game. Those guys get wound up in the parking lot all day long, and uh, they're going to be hollering. They're going to be throwing stuff. They're going to be doing all that kind of stuff. And, and LSU is going to be ready to play. I guarantee you Ed Ogeron is going to have them, you know, on the edge of their seats getting ready to play like they did against Georgia. But uh, one way to, to take the fans and to take a lot of that completely out of the game is to score some points and and uh, we're capable of doing that. We're capable of co- uh, scoring points very quick and uh, I think years past, you know, we, we were kind of a running team and, you know, you had to run the ball 10, 12, 15 t- times, had to have drives and you had to drive all the way down there. Now with too. I mean, we we just can score from anywhere on the field, and I just think this year, this is probably one. Of, it has the chance to be one of, of Saban's best offenses ever. And uh, if they go down there and block and run their routes right and uh, are ready to play, uh, it's going to be close at first, and it might it might even be close the first half. But I think that. Uh, we're good enough on offense, and we're we've gotten a lot better on defense. That we have a chance to uh, win the football game and uh, to uh, to not lose in a place that's hard to win. You know, it's hard to win down there, but I think we can do it. No doubt about it. Great conversation, Tommy. Folks, follow Tommy on Twitter at Tommy Wilcox. He's got a Facebook page. Catch him uh, every week. Give us the show times for Tommy Wilcox Outdoors on WVUA twenty three. Right now, Gary, it's every Sunday night at 1030, and then uh, we'll be starting shortly uh, on Sunday afternoons for people when they get out of church. It'll be at 130 in yeah. the afternoon. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's a great show. Some of the best outdoors television you're going to find anywhere. Good to catch up with you, Tommy, and I guess I'll see you again in the morning on uh, on my TV what show. What time? Uh, you need to be there at about uh, 11 o'clock. All right, my friend. I'll see you then.